So welcome to Techno Dad Life, and today we're going to review the Zima board, which is a little mini one board computer. And I actually, before I got it, I thought it was a dumb idea. And spoiler alert, I actually fell in love with it when I actually got it. But today, besides uh, just going over the specs and things like that, we'll make, we'll show you actually how to make a mini server in like literally five seconds. No, just kidding. Five minutes. So is the Zima board worth it? I would say yes, but it depends on your use case. And so what we'll do is we'll go over the specs, how it compares to Raspberry Pi, and then we will show you how to set up a server in under a few minutes, actually. So here we go. So in the actual case, you get a Zima board, a SATA cable, and an adapter, and a user manual. So the Zima board looks like this. It's one giant heat sink, has two uh, USB 3 ports, a video port, a uh, power port, and then two one gigabit Ethernet ports. And on the other end, it has two, well, this is hard to do. On the other end, it has two SATA ports and a power port. So it also includes the single SATA port adapter, so you can plug it in. I actually also got a dual SATA port adapter and a dual hard drive holder. And that was like 20 bucks or total for all those things. So if we look at the specs, there's actually three different Zima boards. So they come with a Debian-based OS although you can put any x86 base uh, OS on it. There's three Zima boards, the 232, 432, 832. They all have a Apollo Lake processor, uh, but they go from two cores to four cores. Two core one starts at, uh, I think, $109, going up to the four core one at, N, at the N3450 with eight gigabytes of memory. That's $199. It has a eMMC that's 32 gigabytes. That's what the operating system's uh, installed on. It has a 6 watt TDP, which I think is actually lower than the Raspberry Pi. It has Intel VTD VTX and encryption AESNE, uh, transcode 1080p video, and it has support for H.265. Now, I'm sure you're saying to yourself, well, I can get a Raspberry Pi for that and a Raspberry Pi 5, and actually it's even less expensive. So let's take a look at that. So the lowest Raspberry Pi 5 starter kit that I could find, so basically this has the power supply, the case, the SD card, the Raspberry Pi, a cooling fan, and the cables you need to get started. That's $139.99, so $140 versus $199. What this does not have is easily to connect to uh, SATA drives. So the new Raspberry Pi does have the PCIe Express interface where you can connect uh, drives to that, but you have to buy a daughter board for that. And now uh, just looking right now on Amazon, those are not readily available. They still have the USB adapters. So you can't directly access that, although it's probably coming just about right now. For the daughter board that's available, uh, that's $30. So we're getting closer and closer to the actual price of the Zima board. Now the Zima board itself is actually faster than the Raspberry Pi 4. It is not faster than the Raspberry Pi 5. So why would I pick this over a Raspberry Pi 5 or a 4? Well, two reasons. One is the SATA ports that are built in that we can just hook up some cables to and it directly will do that. The other is the PCIe 2.0 4X slot. So then we can add things like 10 gigabit ethernet cards or multi -gig uh, multi port ethernet cards or even some people have installed graphics cards. So it's more for somebody who wants to 
use accessories. So the Raspberry Pi really isn't set up to use PCIe accessories yet. This is a very simple solution. Don't have to buy anything extra. You can just plug things in and they work. The Zemo board also has a big uh, selection of things on printable where you can make stands and other things. So for me, I got this two hard drive. It's uh, aluminum, I guess, or stainless steel uh, laser cut. But uh, if I had my 3D printer working, I would be using or printing at one of these Zemo board stands, which makes it so that you can have the hard drives there. They have also ones for your PCIe riser cards to stabilize them. So definitely something to look for. So now for video transcoding, it is an Apollo Lake chipset. And so if we go down, like we said before, it says HEVC and it can do 8-bit and it can only decode 10-bit. So technically it should be able to transcode 4K videos, although I have not tried. And now uh, if you have a Raspberry Pi 5, that can also now uh, decode 4K video too. Okay, so let's log into our server. And so we just go to casa, C-A-S-O-S dot local. And that will take us to this page. We click go, type in a username and password, then click create. And so this is the OS. It's pretty simple. So just... We'll go over a few things quickly. So in the top corner, that's our accounts. If we want to change some settings. And so what I recommend before you do anything else is actually updates. And the current version is 0.4.4. .4. So we'll do that. So once that's done, you can close that. And we'll take a look at everything else here. So we can show or take away the search bar, which is at the top right here, change the search engine, change the language. Oh, I don't want that language, whatever it is, I can't read it. Change the web UI, and that's where we log in up here. Change the wallpaper like that. Now we have purple. Show the news, we don't wanna do that. Show recommended apps, we can actually get rid of that too. Uh, automatically mount USB drives. We do want that. And then we can restart or shut down. And then terminal is how we log into the terminal. Also show us logs. So the username and the password for the terminal are Casa OS and Casa OS. And it's going to recommend you change your password, which I think you should do, but I'm not going to do it right now because this is a video. Okay, and then we have date and time, CPU status, RAM status. We can right click that and should show us something underneath that doesn't. Next we have storage and we're going to click the little thing here. And so we have two other drives attached. And so what we want to do is add those to our storage. So we create storage. Storage one is going to erase everything. So we're going to format and create. So there's our first one. Let's do that again to the second one, format and create. Okay, so those are both added. You can merge those all together. So when you merge those, it sort of makes one giant hard drive. I don't suggest doing that. I suggest you actually uh, have two hard drives where you can back up one to the other. Uh, if you do do that, it's pretty easy to undo it too. So we're all done with drives. And so now our drives are on there. Network, we don't have anything doing, but we'll watch that in a second. It will change. Here we can turn time on and off, system status, storage status, and network status. Okay. So now we have files, and so we have these top ones are on our MMC storage, which is only 32 gigabytes, so we don't really want to stick anything on this. So instead we're gonna use our storage, and so we're gonna right click, create a new folder, 
And we're going to change this to media one. And if we click shared, then that will share this folder that will share this folder on our network as which anybody can read, but no one can write on it. So to add media to this folder, we actually have to drag and drop it from our desktop. And then on storage two, we're going to create a new folder. And so this one's going to be called backups. And that folder is not going to be shared. And so in this media folder, we create a new file called test. And so that shows we can read and write into that. So let's X out of this. Okay. So now let's go to the App Store. And let's just install two easy apps to show you how easy this is. So we're going to test our internet connections. And so we're going to install two things. So the first is open speed test. So we're going to click continue background. And then we're also going to install MySpeed. And then on the main dashboard, that will show those being installed. So the first one is installed. So while that other one is installing, let's take a look at this one. So if we click on the three dots, we can see open tips. And this is where you can put any information you need about the Docker container. If we click on settings, this shows us the Docker Compose settings. And so we can change those here. And then click Save if we change anything. And then finally, we have Uninstall, Restart, and Stop. So let's open Open Speed Test. And so this will test our connection between devices on our network. So basically, how fast is our network not going out onto the internet. So we press start. You can see we have almost a gigabit speed download. And then almost the same for uploads. So that's pretty good. Okay, so now let's check our internet connection. And I know mine is terrible because I live in the country. So this one, we're going to use my speed test. And again, it has the three dots where you can change settings or do different things. So we're going to click on my speed test, accept. And then what we do is up in this top right hand corner, we start speed test. OK, and here you can see uh, my download is 114 and my upload is only 10. That is terrible, but that's OK for here. So the Zima board is definitely not for everyone, but you can, it's great to make a NAS with a network at storage, VPN, great for streaming media with its transcoding. Uh, you can make a software router with it. It has the two ethernet ports uh, and it's great for smart home because it's small and silent. Uh, I actually had a Zigbee three stick attached to this too, which I tried out. Uh, is it the fastest single board computer? No. Is it a silent single board computer? Yes. Does it have PCIe? Yes. And does it have dual SATA ports? Yes. So uh, depending on your needs, this might fit it or you might get something else. It's up to you. Uh, that's it for today. Take care. Have a great day. Bye bye.